I'm going to do a little something here that I normally do on study group page and the Spirit of God led me to just do it on my regular page. Uh, of course, you catch us all the time on Tuesdays for our Bible study and also on uh, Sundays and our weekend worship. And uh, what I want to talk about uh, real briefly here is the what we, it was translated Sabbath, a Shabbat, the word Shabbat, the original word. Okay, here we go. My connection interfered. I guess I'm still going. Okay, so uh, first what I want to do is give you uh, the original word meaning for uh, Shabbat. Shabbat. I'm going from the original language and it's translated Sabbath in the English. So let's see the, uh, the origin of this Sabbath. just want to do something real briefly. Of course, like I said, this type of teaching, I know I'm just doing it on the study group page. Uh, because I, I know I got people on there that really want to get deep into the Word of God in His original uh, content. Now, <clears throat> Genesis 2, 1 and 3, let's see where this word is first mentioned. <clears throat> uh, this covenant actually is a covenant, and we're going to use the, the Hebrew letter word meaning to bring out uh, the true meaning of this word, Shabbat. Now, Genesis 2, 1 through 3, thus the heavens and the earth were all, and, and all the hosts of them were finished, and on the seventh day, Elohim, God, ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then Elohim, God, blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because he rested from all his work which he had done. Now, that's a English translation. The original Hebrew language doesn't read like that. It actually reads, on Elohim, Olive Tav, and that's at Alatav, Yeshua said, I'm the Alatav. On his holy seventh day, he Shabbat. That's what it actually means. So the seventh day was already sanctified, it was already sacred. And that's the day that he would establish covenant on. Remember the number seven come from the Hebrew Alabed Ziyin, which means the primary Hebrews 412, the weapon of the word. In the pictograph, uh, ancient African hieroglyphic. It's the uh, picture of an ancient battle axe, more than two-edged sword. That's why Sheol Paul in Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is quick, powerful, sharpening in a two-edged sword. That's what he was making reference to, the Ziyin being in the pictograph, uh, being the meaning for it is the word of God, the covenant of God. Covenants are cut with a knife or a weapon. So the number seven is the number of covenant, the seventh day. He started creation. He started man. On his timing in the beginning, the seventh day was always holy. It was always a, a day of covenant because it's the number that's holy and the number of covenant. And remember, uh, over in Revelation 1 and 8, uh, 21, 23, Isaiah 4 to 1, all through the scripture, you know, Yeshua revealed to us over 7,000 times. Actually, he said, I am the Aleph Vav Tav, the Aleph Tav, that Aleph Tav that's left out in all English translations, all of them. So in Genesis 1 and 1, it actually reads in the Hebrew language, Barashi, Barah, Elohim, Et, in the beginning, Elohim created the Word, the Aleph and the Tav, the Word of God. Yeshua said, that's me. So if we see this right here, coming from the original, we can clearly understand that it's not just focused on uh, resting. Now that word rest, translated in the English rest, that's the word Shabbat. They got Sabbath, but it's the word Shabbat. It's spelled right there, um, uh, Shin Bet Ta, Shabbat. So what did, what did the father do on the seventh day? He, he, uh, he didn't, it just, it's not centered around not working. Uh, he had rest from his work. First of all, ask yourself the question, can God get tired? Or do he need rest? Is he as a physical being that after he do everything, he need to rest or decease? I know one of the translation means to decease, to refrain from, you know, but that was just the English hitting it. But at the same time, we use those keys of revelation and look at each letter word meaning. Then we can understand what he was saying. So if we understand what shin means. Shin means actually in the pictograph is a picture of, of a tooth in the pictographic language. And it means to consume a tooth also can destroy, be destructive. And you know, the shin is the letter uh, that represent uh, Elohim God as being guardian and protector of his people, the guardian and protector of his people. And one of the key words that's used in spelling 
that that uses Shin to spell it is fire. Aleph Shin. Aleph, uh, that's the father, the strong one, the leader, and then Shin, the great consuming one. So fire is the father who was a consuming fire, and the scripture talks about our God Elohim being a consuming fire, and fire consumes everything. So it means to consume. It means to provide peace and protection because the father is the one who provide peace. He's the one who totally protects us. That was Shin. Man. Then you get the bed or bed, uh, pictographic language is a picture of an ancient tent or a house and it denotes the family or what's inside. What's inside the family? What's inside the house? All right. And then you got Tav. Of course, I just shared one of the meanings for Tav is covenant cross. Remember Yeshua, he was nailed to the cross to establish the covenant of eternal life. So Shin, Bet, Ta, you got the provider of peace, protection, provisions of his family covenant, Shabbat. So what did Elohim, what did God do? He established his covenant of provision for his family on the seventh day. After he had created everything, created man, the first thing he did was to make sure that we had all the provisions, everything we needed for uh, shalom, everything whole, everything uh, full, everything complete relative to his family. So it's a covenant. It's a covenant of provision. It doesn't mean just to stop working on anything like that. It's a covenant of provisions. Now, the work will cease uh, relative to provision. We work to get what? Provision. So to honor this covenant as the father being our provider, then we cease from what we are doing and reflect on what he has already done and honor that covenant. Now, uh, I'm going to look at, uh, let's look at Hebrew. I want to go to Exodus uh, 20 and 12, but look at this word again over in Hebrews chapter 4. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. All right. Now, look at this. Hebrews chapter 4. Here's the same Hebrew word. Shabbat, the same one as in Genesis. Now, remember Genesis uh, chapter 2 was way before Moshe, Moses. It was That covenant was established before Moses was born. And it was doing uh, before Moses was born, after he was born, and after he had, uh, uh, went on to glory. And it's still intact now. That covenant have not ceased. The Father being our provider of provisions and protection. We understand the eternal covenant of life, the blood of Yeshua, but we got to also remember that this covenant here was established before everything actually got on the road. Adam and Eve, uh, Adam and Hava, they were created on the sixth day, you see it, and right behind him creating uh, his family. What did he do? Establish a covenant of provision. Also in the word uh, Shabbat, you have a root word, uh, Shin Bet, and it means to return. Actually, Shin Va Bet means to return. And you got also have a root word for repent because uh, shin vav, excuse me, bet spells repent. Repent mean to shin, destroy, vav, what's connected or established on the inside of me, bet, inside of me. What's in my house? Once I destroy it, then I can truly turn. So you also get the meaning out of Shabbat that the father returned to uphold his family covenant of provision. He turned, after he had created everything, he turned all of his uh, uh, direction toward making sure my family is taken care of. Just like when you get married and the man, uh, you know, your kids come about uh, primarily your attention is turned to making sure you provide for those children, provide for that child, provide for your family after they come into the earth. Here's the same pattern here dealing with the Shabbat in the word of God. Now, Hebrews uh, 4 and 4, and I'm going to move through this. Uh, it's a lot in it, and I won't be able to just hit a whole lot of it. Now, look at Hebrews 4 uh, and 4, and just, just open your eyes up to the original language. And he says, for he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way. And God, or Elohim, rested Shabbat. He returned. He turned to the covenant that he had established. All right. All right. Rested on the what? Seventh day from all of his works. And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest. What? They, they won't be able to sit down? Can't mean that. So you can't depend on the translators. They won't be able to enter into his covenant. Covenant always require obedience to the principles of the covenant. And because they rebel against the principles, they couldn't enjoy that. 
Now, let me read on. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of what? Their disobedience. Again, he didn't designate a certain day saying in David today after such a long time as it has been said today, if you hear my voice, if you will hear his voice and do not harden your hearts. Now, verse eight, for if Joshua, Yehoshua had given them rest or had uh, brought them into this covenant of provisions, then he would not after it had spoken of another day. There remains therefore a Shabbat for the people of Elohim God, for he who has entered his Shabbat has himself also ceased from his works as Elohim did from his. Now, remember this English translation, but think about it. What, when we get into the Shabbat, we just stop working and don't do anything? No. This Shabbat here, this covenant of provision is making reference to the millennium and after. Whereas God the Father himself on the book of Revelation is going to come on the earth and he is going to be our light. We're going to be in the very presence of our Father and our Father is being provided uh, of provisions and our protection. We're going to be right in his presence. That's the former, uh, the future Shabbat or covenant that he's talking about and I'll deal with that later. But remember this, Moshe or Moses had two primary assignments. Number one, set the people of God free. Number two, bridge the presence of God in the midst of his people. That's why Elohim, he told him, I want you to build a tabernacle over in Hebrews. I believe it's five and eight or eight and five. He said he allowed Moshe to look into heaven and he said, you see this tabernacle, you see the pattern. And I want you to do the same thing on earth, what you see in heaven, because I want to dwell with my people. I want to be a father to them. I want to be their protector. I want to be their provider. That was Moshe's assignment. That assignment, he did it. And the temple, the tabernacle was a type of what was in heaven, that tabernacle. And then, of course, when Yeshua uh, came in the earth, was resurrected on the same day, the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom, meaning that he opened his presence up. Now, Yeshua, he is letting us know you don't have to go to a geographical location. I'm getting ready to come into you now. And that's that's exciting. That's why the scripture said he would restore the tabernacle of David. David had a tent where the Ark of the Covenant was in and everybody could see it. There was no no borders or barriers around separating the people from actually seeing the Ark of the Covenant. And they was praised and so thankful that they knew that the father wanted to be in the midst of them. So that's what this covenant was all about. So I gave you that from the original uh, Hebrew in Genesis. Now, let me hit this right quick over in Ezekiel. And this this how important uh, the keeping of the covenant is. Look at Ezekiel uh, 20. And anytime you see that word rest over in the Messianic scriptures, what's now called the New Testament, but Bishop Melito of Saud is a Catholic bishop, is the one who came up with the term New Testament. The actual uh, word for the uh, New Testament is the Messianic scriptures. The early church never referred to it as a New Testament. They always referred to it as a Messianic scriptures. When you talk about the Messianic, you have to talk about the Messiah. When you have to talk about the Messiah, you have to talk about Yeshua. When you talk about Yeshua, you have to understand that he was a Hebrew. We want to focus on him being Jew. He was a Hebrew uh, of the tribe of Judah, or Yehudite. And that's where that come from. And Judah uh, mean praise. And uh, actually the name for uh, Yehovah, Yahweh, Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey, if you put a dollar uh, right at the end, before the end of the spelling of that name, then you get the word Judah or Yehudah. And those who were of the tribe of Yehuda, they are the ones that practice the tenets or the word instructions that God had given in the earth. All right. And over in Romans, it'll tell you that, you know, if you spiritually, we are Yehudites because spiritually we have been born again of the lineage of Yeshua, who was of the tribe of Yehudites. Now, Dalit mean door or access. So Yahweh, Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey, uh, you put a Dalit in there. He entered into the earth through Yeshua. And that's what that's all about. And that's the whole another teaching in itself. All right. Now, Ezekiel 20 and 12 said, moreover, now watch this. This is the reason they, they were punished, uh, not just because they didn't keep the law. It was because they were not obedient to the covenant. This covenant is very powerful. Look at Ezekiel 20 and 12. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths or what? Shabbat. And now we know it, the core meaning is I gave them.